Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing Arena by the band Marsupilami. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. The name Marsupilami probably has some sort of meaning, I just don't know it and I was too lazy to check, but it's really odd to say, but it kinda is unforgettable by this point because it really just flows on the tongue. In any way, here are some of my favorite bits from this album. So Marsupilami founded in the year of 1970 in the UK but they quickly relocated to the Netherlands and much like yesterday's episode about 2066 and then, this band also had a pretty short lifetime but unlike the other band Marsupilami were actually able to release two albums to their discography. The first one is the self-titled first album that came out in 1970 and today we're looking at their second one and last one called Arena released in 1971. Now overall Marsupilami are actually considered to be a sort of proto-prog band. Now the thing is it doesn't really work with the timeline because this band came in 1970, of course it's after 1969, so technically you can't be proto-prog if you come after 1969, but the thing about their sound, at least in their first album, which I personally don't know, a lot of people say that it really sounds like proto-prog and thus they categorize it as such, but I would say that today's album is pretty progressive and is somewhat conforming by now to the norms of the progressive genre. And this album in particular holds one of the most progressive qualities to any progressive rock album and that is that it's a concept album. And the concept of this album is pretty straightforward and it talks about the brutality of the culture in ancient Rome. Now for anyone who's somehow still unaware of this, the Roman Empire stood for about I believe 500 years and in that time they've marked a lot of progress in human civilization and culture. And if there's one thing we all know for a fact is that two states of being cause different types of progress. The first one is war. War causes a lot of technological progress and does unite people in some sort of patriotic way and it all leads to a great development of mankind in giant leaps. But in times of peace what progresses most is usually the culture, the humanity side of things and Rome knew them both. But the ancient Roman Empire had one rule breaking idea and that's to bring a small dose of the wartime right into the center of their cities in the form of what's known as gladiator battles. And in that way even the women, the children, the elderly and the sick all got a small piece of thrill from the war right at their doorstep. And gladiator battles, although making box office hits in the cinema nowadays, were not a pleasant undertaking to say the least. And this combined with other customs that would today be considered as being atrocious is what made Rome a brutal culture. And a quick millennia and a half afterwards, Marsupilami are here to introduce this problem and address it in their concept album. And this album does it using 5 separate tracks with 3 ones on the side A and 2 on side B, with side A being more concise about the idea of war and gladiators and what it causes and side B being a bit more obscure. Now in my personal opinion, side A of this album has some of the most banging progressive rock music of that specific time frame. Not a lot of bands at that time knew how to do such hard type of prog and I really really liked it and I think it comes down to two main people in the band, the first being the vocalist Fred Hassens with his screaming voice and he sometimes even cries things out and there's so much emotion in his singing, but moreover it all comes down to the drumming by drummer Mike Foraker. Throughout this album and especially on the first side he drums like his life depends on it and that's really cool, he goes all out in so many ways it just sounds 
hurtful to play in this sort of way, but it does do so and it sounds very much like the raging of battle is actually going on in your ears. And to give it the slight hint of ancient Rome itself, he also uses pretty wisely incorporated timpani, which give the songs a more authentic feeling. Now that being said, I don't think that the vocalist or the drums are the main instrument in this album, I'd actually argue that the keyboards are the main instrument, but the thing is they don't really stand up with the times that much and they sound a lot like the keyboards you'd find on 70s psychedelic rock albums which is fine but it isn't as innovative or creative as what we would see in progressive rock music. But understandably the way that most big prog bands played keyboards at the time wasn't quite coined yet and thus you can't really blame them for playing it like this. And personally I found that this band has two types of moods throughout the songs, they have the heavy and they have the light ones. And I think that they've really mastered the heavy moods. They go all out when they go heavy and it's really hard and it's really fun and it's almost cathartic in some way. But I don't think they quite master doing the lighter moods, the calmer moods, the softer moods. Those sections of the albums could be worked upon a bit better, but of course no one's gonna work on them. The band has disbanded over 50 years ago, so that's what we have to deal with. Although there's this one moment in the album, I believe it is in the second track or maybe it's in the third, I'm not quite sure when there's a bunch of screaming and yelling and crying going all around and then you also have a very strong Hammond organ cording along to the music and it sounds completely completely amazing probably my best section from this album but my main issue with the A side is actually the title track of the arena I think that this one is pretty nice it's a big epic but in all honesty it really takes time until it actually resolves anywhere and to the end it really sounds very very good but in the beginning it kind of doesn't really find itself and I think it's just a bunch of wasted time. Now side two of this album despite introducing some new instruments like the saxophone and the harmonica to me at least feels like the lesser side it goes in a more psychedelic undertone passages and I'm not quite the fan of it. But in all honesty I'm saying a lot of things that I might have not liked about this album but it's not the points where I would say you had to change these things and then the album would sound better. I would contrast that by saying that it might not be my favorite cup of prog, it might not fill it to the brim, but it is good and for someone who likes this type of music this would be a fantastic album, I just happen to be not quite the right person for it. I just happen to be not quite the right person for it. And maybe some of the magnitude of this album came from someone you wouldn't be expecting and that's the producer for this album called Peter Bardens. Now you might know him because he is from Camel. But back at the time Camel were not the big superheroes we all know in the prong community. They were actually pretty obscure at the time and still didn't have their big breakthrough. But you can hear a lot of influences that kind of sound like Camel, although these guys in Marsupilami are more rough edged than Camel were. And they definitely usually went harder into the music than Camel did, although there are some passages in Mirage where I can completely compare the two albums. Now considering the fact that Camel hasn't made their magnum opuses quite yet, I would probably argue that Marsupilami actually influenced the sound of Camel for days to come. But unfortunately this is all we got from Marsupilami, there's the first album which I'm looking forward to listen to and I've added it to my reserve list so if any one of you want to recommend it down in the comments know that I'm gonna listen to it. But that's the only thing about it and I can honestly see myself having this album click with me better in the future for no apparent reason other than me changing. But if there's one thing that did click with me quite well is the cover for this album so let's talk about it. This is a stunning cover in my opinion, don't you think? I think it's very lovely. The first thing that comes to mind when I look at this one are the stunning colors, but of course if there's one thing that I prefer more than that is the symmetry found throughout this cover. So I've talked about this in the past, but I'm gonna talk about it again. We have a great sense of symmetry here and especially using the rule of thirds. If you look closely, you can see that the ground level is on the bottom third and then you have the two upper thirds being the sky. Of course, the 
main event of this cover happens in the middle third if you look at it vertically. The band logo is in the absolute middle of the upper third of this album. And I can go on and on, but you get my point. There was a lot of symmetry and composition thought into this one, and it definitely shows making this album cover a lot more appealing. But then you have the symbolism on here, and I think that's another thing which is really cool. So in the background, you can clearly see the Parthenon. Now, the Parthenon is the temple where they worship the god Athena in Athens, of course. And instead of putting the Colosseum where usually gladiator battles took place, they actually put a place of religious worship, thus exemplifying the idea that these things, the battles of the gladiators, the brutal things that went on in Rome, most of the times happened in some sort of worship to the gods. And despite all of these things being very heinous and very hideous to comprehend, they were all justified by the idea that they were part of a pagan ritual. And the main scene that's going on in this cover is truly magnificent. We of course see someone committing a heinous crime of murder, of course it is unjustified, nowadays this wouldn't be taken that well, but the thing is we see these things in art museums or in history museums and we don't really think a lot of the marble statues that we see in these very atrocious poses. It all just seems kind of detached from us in some way. But here as you can see, this moment is captured right before it turns into stone, thus making at a real occurrence that its true meaning will be lost to time. So no matter how much we beautify the past, we must remember that these things were heinous, they were brutal, they weren't good. We like to look at the past as if it was all good and we like to discern the bad things that happened within the winners, let's say. But in all honesty, what happened in Rome was kind of brutal throughout many, many years and this album goes to exemplify just that. Or in other words, this album cover serves the album and the music itself very well and I always love when they do that so this is a pretty perfect album cover. So this is not a perfect album in my opinion, but it could easily be a perfect album for someone else, but in my opinion it's still a very great album and thus it's receiving the rating of 8 out of 10. But that's about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be listening to Tonton Makut by Tonton Makut. Do I know what that means? no idea what it means. I of course want to thank my lovely supporter over on Patreon, so thank you so much to Clay Walnum, you are the best, and if any of you want to support me over on Patreon, you can find the link down in the description or in my about page. But that's about it guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.